Tim Burton said that Disney's been killing animals for years, and it's true. I mean, like those movies are really dark sometimes. I mean, Bambi's pretty dark, right? But these, these are a lovely balance. Let's take another question right here. Um, it's kind of a two part. One is a little bit about the aesthetic of the film. I've noticed that within the creases of all the characters, instead of it being dark, it's actually blue. And I was wondering if that was an aesthetic choice. And my second part of that is why cheese. <laughs> so just for the camera, it's two part question. One is about the Leica aesthetic and they're specifically about the use of the color blue and the second part is why cheese. <laughs> the, the cheese is 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 just a, a symbol of conspicuous consumption and the idea is that you could use anything. It could be wine, it could be money, it could be, you know, uh, you know, a new house, it could be any it's just conspicuous consumption. The, the the idea of wrapping it up in cheese is just highlighting how absurd that whole thing, that obsession with something that does not matter. And these people are consumed by this idea. And for them, it's the height of, of what high society can be. And yet it's so stupid. It's, it's just, edible you know, mold. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just Behemoth. Mold. Yeah, and it's, it's also, you know, you guys learn this. you got a little bit more experience. There's rules to comedy. Cheese, funny. Wine, not funny. Rowboat, not funny. Canoe, funny. Open the door slow, not funny. Slam the door, funny. Cowboy boots, funny. Other kind of shoes, I don't know, not funny. But cheese has got funnier words to use. And we had our writer, who's, uh, whose email is pun dog, couldn't make puns out of cheese, out of wine, so we stuck with cheese. <laughs> Actually, cheese is a big element of the book, too. Yeah, yeah. it really it came from Alan Snow's book. And yeah, original. But it, it, it ends up getting to the thematic thing, which is the absurdity of, of what we can, of yeah. what people obsess over. Um, as, as far as the kind of the aesthetic of it, it was a critical thing. I mean, with each film, we try to do something different visually than what we've done in the past, and each film has to have its own unique, distinct look. For this thing, we were drawn, we drove a lot of inspiration from impressionistic artists from, from the last century, and, and, and one of the things we found fascinating about, about what they were able to do was what they were able to juxtapose these opposing colors next to each other, and it felt completely natural. We did that in the set design, but we also did it in the characters, which is something that we hadn't really done before. So you have these reds and blues right next to each other, which shouldn't fit, which shouldn't look right, and yet, because it, because you know the design was so completely unified across the entire show, it just ends up almost looking like a moving illustration. I mean, you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, early on, we started out with uh, a couple of illustrators that we really liked, and a lot of time you have art that you know the characters are integrated into the art, and there's a shape language to the characters, and there's a line quality language to the, the lines drawn around the buildings. And you find a way to incorporate that in the sets that you really build. But usually along the way, you start to lose stuff because it's just not practical. Like in 2D animation, trying to draw those shapes on a character's face is impossible. They, they'd wiggle all over the place. They'd be really disconcerting. You couldn't follow the character's performance. And we were just lucky that the facial printing technology had improved so much by the time that we got here that they was able to track those. You know, originally Coraline's faces were hand-painted because they couldn't print in color. And Paranorman advanced a little. And, and we just lucked out that by the time we got here, you know, we could do these Lucian Freud type portrait faces with all that those color elements on it. And you know, we you know, Travis was convinced and Brian McLean, the head of rap, he said, Oh no, we can do it. You know, we were we were not sure that this was gonna work out, but yeah. everybody assured us we could stick with you know the style that we'd chosen and uh, sure enough it never really was an issue. I mean we didn't get all the chatter we were thinking we might. So. And it happens it happens a lot of, like you sort of set this bar. This is the piece of art, you know, it's a concept art by our you know, Michelle Breton, the artist this is what we'd like to do. And then Kurt Enderley, the art director, has to figure out a way, well, how do you do that line quality in an actual building? Well, the wrought iron, that's an obvious way. Wrought iron looks like lines, and then cracks, and then differentiations in the colors. If you just set up these problems, people, people find solutions if you give them you know, the opportunity. So it makes sense why the dad then looks like Van Gogh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think it's cool that they look imperfect. They don't have the... The big eye, the, the sort of same animated look that we're so used to yeah. seeing, that aspirational look that you could never achieve as an actual human being. Yeah. Look human. Um, you know, we were lucky out again in technology, we, we could have more realistic proportions. And in a world where you have humans that are calling other characters monsters, you know, if everything's weird, then nothing's weird. You know, if the people are as ugly as the monsters, then the credibility of the story falls apart. It's like, why are they those calling those monsters? Ugly. What are you yeah. <laughs> they are, they are, but exactly. they look the more realistic. You know, and then so the box trolls were different and monstery enough that you bought the idea that people would be afraid of them and stuff. Well, I mean, what, what he's talking about is the proportions because the yeah. you know the head sizes were much smaller. You know, typically in an animated film, the, the characters have giant heads, mm -hmm. and in fact, on on Coraline and Paranorman, that was one of the 
compromises that we had to make in the design because we couldn't get the kind of detail in the facial performance <coughs> without making the heads oversized. We, what we were able to progress in the technologies, we were able to make the proportions more realistic. And so Eggs' head, if you put him next to, to Norman or to Coraline, they would look like freaks. That They have giant heads compared to Eggs, which looks much more realistic. But we were still able to get all that detail, all that incredible impressionistic detail because of the advancements in the technology. Okay, I think we have one final question. This gentleman right here. Hi, for me? Sure. All right, cool. Uh, so I'm a YouTube content creator, and when I look back on my older videos, I kind of cringe a little bit because I've gotten a lot better. And I'm a big fan of Car Coraline because I watched it three years ago. That's when I first movie I watched you guys. So when you watch, go back to Carol Caroline, do you guys notice a big difference? Uh, you're cringe. In your you're cringe. <laughs> you want to go for cringe. Um, <laughs> so the question is, um, do you cringe when you watch Coraline because of the advancements you've made? Coraline's awesome. Why don't you? He would never that. cringe. They but yeah, I see what you're talking about. Do you, would notice it. do you see the big differences um, and sort of the advances that have been made in the technology since Coraline? I'm extraordinarily proud of Coraline. I think it's a beautiful movie. It, it's super awesome. But of course, I mean, the, the, the amount of evolution that we've seen in every single department of life over the last five years. It's seismic. It's like what you when you look what we were able to do with the puppets, with the camera and the lighting, with the facial textures, with the uh, with the costumes, with the hair. It's every single department within Leica has made dramatic advancements just within the last five years. And so there are things that we could do on on box trolls as a matter of course that on Coraline would have been.